Are you recording, Pedro? Yeah, recording. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to, to be here with uh, everyone on, on this discussion. So first off, if you haven't filled your name, please do it in the, in the notes. Um, and also, I need a volunteer to take notes, if possible. Do, does anyone take, want to take the, the lead on, on the notes? I, I can take notes. Thank you, Jim. Um, all right, so regarding this discussion, um, by the way, the title is wrong. By the way, I will fix it. Uh, so today we're going to discuss uh, identity, uh, identity profile. So let me try to explain uh, why this is important. So if you read the, if you have read the, the RFC, the identity profile um, contains your personal details as well as um, your social proofs. And in the future, it might contain uh, other things, all right? But for now, it's just your personal details and your social proofs. So essentially, those uh, two things are created by you and signed by you. And, and we don't need any third party uh, in order to create those, uh, those details and those proofs. Uh, but later on, as I said, we can uh, have third party uh, integrations or uh, verifications as well. But the thing is that this profile, um, there's some discussion around the community about the privacy concerns uh, around the identity profile and the security of it as well. Um, because, you know, the identity profile and the way you expose your claims, your uh, credentials, your verifiable credentials, at least by the spec, should, should, be, uh, should follow the principle of minimum, minimum disclosure by default. And what this means is, is that the user decides what to expose to the third party and he is in, uh, in control of that. Um, never, nevertheless, uh, there are scenarios where public identity profiles will be very nice to have, both for DAP developers as well, um, as, well as to, to develop certain features such, such as search engines um, about you know, searching for people around you or your friends of your friends and so on. Um, that will be really nice features to have on, on, on that. Um, so the first topic of, of discussion is, is about this. Um, and I have three different approaches to these problems. They, are, they, are, they aren't exclusive, so they can be implemented um, at the same time uh, or be uh, present uh, as an option for the end user. Uh, so the first one is to like to obey the principle of minimum disclosure. So whenever a DAP uh, asks details about a user, uh, and if you know your port, for instance, and you, if you tried it, they follow this principle. So essentially, the, the DAP asks the user to authenticate, and the user says, okay, I, I want to authenticate, but I only want to give my name and my age or my birthday and my location. They are in control to what they want to expose. In the end, they, they might want to say, I want to be fully anonymous. And that's an option as well. Uh, this is the first option. But this creates uh, an issue because the, that information that you just um, gave to the DAP might became, become stale uh, as time passes on because you change your, your name, even like they say that you, you get married and your last name changes, for, for instance, or uh, your location changes, your email changes, any, any information that you have about you might change. And because the DAP <coughs> only saw the, the information at the time that uh, the user uh, gave uh, authorization, um, that information becomes stale uh, when time passes. And this leads to the second approach, which is uh, similar to the first one. So the identity profile is passed when authenticate, authenticating alongside a token. And by a token, it can be, um, can be a public private key, it can be anything really. Um, so the user gives a token that can be used to retrieve the same information whenever necessary, all right? Does it make sense so, so far? And then we have the third option, and the third option is, is really not, uh, is a combination of, of everything because you, you can have uh, the three approaches, they are non-exclusive. So the third option is 
to have a public profile. So essentially imagine whenever you create your identity, you put your name and your photo, and avatar, whatever, and you might say, all right, this information is part of my public profile. This is public. There is a deterministic way to fetch uh, the profile of a given DID. So the user is still in control because the user decides what uh, is part of the public uh, profile. In the end, a uh, user might decide uh, that no information is public or uh, he selects a few, a few of those fields. Um, DAPs can link uh, uh, any identity profile. Like imagine instead of having the, the profile replicated in data structures, they could have, uh, simply have um, a pointer to the profile and the profile is lazy fetched um, as soon as the, the information is necessary. Um, and the, this also enables us to do some kind of public search or federated search of uh, users, like identities. Um, and also the private information still remains um, secure, either by the solution one or two, because the, 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 the fields that you want to be private are secure and you only disclose them uh, uh, whenever that needs it, needs it, and you authorize uh, the, 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 that access, basically. So this is what I came up with, um, and I, I wanted to you know, get feedback about this and what you think about all these uh, topics. Does anyone know to express your, go ahead, Jim. Um, I think it might be useful to um, sort of uh, break down like for decentralized apps in particular, which are different than you know, what people are used to. Um, like, I don't know, maybe we need some use cases to really sort of uh, example use cases just to say where these are needed. Because I think in, in some cases, like with a, like a really true decentralized app, like I'm thinking like, uh, say like a, a, a wiki or something, when I'm sharing my identity, I'm sharing it with an app which is running on my computer that I completely control in the app itself is not is actually trustworthy it's just what does the app do with the information i'm sharing with it when it builds so like if i'm do, if i if my app is a, a shopping list for myself um it probably doesn't really need my identity like it might i might log into it so i can synchronize all my devices right but like it doesn't need to know my name it just i just it's just me um, it probably needs only to in the checkout yeah, process of yeah. But for uh, like a, a chat app, you know, or a, a, a Zoom clone, um, obviously identity is a very strong. We want you know strong identities that say somebody can't impersonate somebody else. So that's sort of like the other extreme of it. Then I think there's a lot of like sort of use cases in between. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think we have three different um, use cases. I, I mean, we have more, but I think we have three different um, uh, use cases that most are similar to this. So we have uh, one that, that is completely personal. There's no public information whatsoever. It's just me using the app. And um, the use case here is, for instance, you are using, a, as you said, the e-commerce website and you want to authenticate in order to you know, have a cart and add products. And, and once you're done, you, you do the checkout process. And during the checkout process, you need to have more information about you. That's a use case, but there's no public information whatsoever um, in, those, in that scenario. So this is one scenario. The second one is something similar to Zoom or Google, Google Docs, for instance, where uh, there's people collaborating in documents, but the document is like private in the sense that only the collaborators within the document uh, know each other. Um, and I mean, you don't really need to um, deal with the dates of the identity profile, um, at least in my, my perspective. And then we have the end of the line uh, scenario, which is a completely public uh, application such as Discussify, for instance. So Discussify is, is that application that you have comments, um, and it's very similar to Facebook comments and or whatnot. And essentially, 
everything that is that you put there is public. There's no encryption, and everyone, even guests, uh, guest users, can see what you what you comment on, uh, comment commented in the application. And and this is where like the um, the issue comes along because if the user asks like authenticates to the to the DAP and provides uh, information such as its name and, and the social proofs and so on, how can the DAP a deal with updates of those information if if the the app wants because the app might might want to be stagnant in terms of the, the name and, and and the avatar that appears in the comment but for instance twitter if you change your avatar it changes in every tweet uh, basically even the tweets that you made five years ago or ten years ago um so that's why uh, the public profile or at least the, the second solution of having a recoverable token that can be used to fetch uh, the, the that information uh, and the revocable revocable token basically means that the user might revoke the app and once it, it revokes the app the app can no longer um, fetch the, the up to date information go ahead Billy. um i i have some some thoughts about about this some quickly um so i think the um the uh, uport has a good uh, is a good example of self sovereign identity where it asks you like oh of uh, capabilities uh, or authorization he, he asks you whether you want to share certain parts of your of your profile with with the the dap and with the dap we mean particularly we mean other users right but there's no central authority right now so um i think it's a good a good principle that that the user uh, has to give authorization for to share certain parts of, of their credentials or so certain credentials sorry but i think regarding the um, this this profile problem i think like, like i've come up with like three different uh, vectors that we could analyze separately so um first is privacy um so whether the profile is going to be um, um is going to be um, how much is it so is, is it going to be private between peers is it going to be public is it going not to be disclosed at all uh, is it going to be just shared with the with the group and again i think this falls into uh, app specific uh, criteria right so for instance in a, in a social app uh, you may want to be public the, pro the profile may be public so publicly fetched so you may have to be careful with what you disclose in your, in your profile and you have to be aware in the interface of, of that you're disclosing some information for the, 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 that, the that is not encrypted in any way the public can can access uh, or that is group private if you are for instance in a, in a, a chat app a group chat app like whatsapp uh, that could be the case that you're you're exposing your profile to this uh, to this group so it's going to be group private so it's going to be public to everyone but whatever you disclose is going to be visible to, to this group of people and um, the, the 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 third mode uh, is uh, P2P uh, private. So it's this is this this profile is going on to only to be visible to to this other peer, whoever that that is. Um, that's that would be the the, the throw three modes of privacy of the profile. Uh, the other aspect of identity profile, the second would be synchronization of the profile. Right, so whether you want to synchronize uh, the profile with other, being other uh, devices or even uh, other peers. So peers may pull or push your profile uh, or updates on your profile. And you want to make, may want to give them that, that capability of getting the latest information on your profile. So for instance, uh, changes on your email address or changes on your profile pic, changes on your, your your uh, physical address; uh, those uh, those changes would fall into this this problem category of synchronization uh, of of the of the profile. The third one, I think, would be s discovery or indexing. Well, I mean, I would say discovery, and uh, I, I think you have like uh, different schools. Like you have the, the the traditional social network public profile global index uh, aspect where everyone has a public profile that is indexable. Uh, you can search, uh, like you can build your graph by searching in, the, in this index or try to build your graph 
by searching in, in, in this index, which is a huge index, a public huge index, somehow it, this happens, or uh, the scuttlebutt uh, way, the secure scuttlebutt way, where you, you are introduced to someone else and you have to ask for permission to, uh, to, to be able to even see who the, who the person is. Um, so there's, there's a mutual, mutual authentication dance um, happening. And then there is, um, so, and it's, it's not a public profile. There is no global index. It's just um, peers exchanging, exchanging identifiers or tokens, if you will. Um, and those would be like, I, I, I have no, no, no answers to this. I think it all depends on, on, on which use cases you want to address first. But I, I would categorize in, in those three, uh, three main dimensions. So privacy, Synchronization and uh, discovery, I would say. Let me just say one thing about the, the U-Port, what, what U-Port does is not really uh, OAuth because OAuth gives you a token that you can use to, to fetch the, the information. They are more similar to the first approach where you disclose one time and that information is stale, becomes stale. You can't really um, fetch the, the up-to-date information without requesting the user again to authenticate for the DAO. Right, well, what I was saying, it was similar to OAuth in a sense that uh, uh, the OAuth, you are aware of what uh, capabilities yeah. you're providing to the, to the application right. uh, in your behalf. Yeah, yeah that yeah. approach is, is, like, is common to the first two ones. And even the third one, one when the application requests some, some field that is not part of, on your, of your public profile, uh, imagine the, the authentication screen might contain uh, that information as well and you might want or not to disclose. And let me just introduce one thing. Um, the verifiable credential spec um, have these uh, present, present, presentations, I think that's uh, the thing, which is basically whenever you want to present your credentials, um, you can present a set of credentials and also you might want to say, hey, don't use uh, the, the, these fields or the, those credentials um, publicly, like these, you should be treating these carefully and in privately. Of course, this is just a signaling, uh, like saying be careful. But you know, in the spec, they they uh, make warnings about hey, even if the, the you say to be careful, the app might uh, make the all the information public and disseminate in the internet and so on. Like, like this is like GDPR for ver verifiable credentials. This is saying like, uh, yeah. like, like if you provide the, the bank with the proof that you, your address proof, you're saying to the bank, okay, use this for your own benefit, for instance, do not disclose this to anyone else. Exactly. Okay, makes sense. Uh, which, which makes sense and, and it's nice if you want to take, take uh, that uh, feature of, of the credentials uh, spec into our own system because we are going to use verifiable credentials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, basically there are, uh, as you said, a few uh, use cases and, and verticals that we need to, to explore. I'm, I'm more, I'm leaning more into be simplistic uh, as the first approach. I know that it has some problems, but at least we will have something working, which is the you know the more private one, the more like. Uh, principle of meaning disclosure one where you disclose uh, one time only and whenever the app needs um, receives up to date information is when the user authenticates again um, which is you no know, as its problem but at least we, we have something and, and I think we'll need this as the baseline of, of the um, authentication and and later on we might uh, we might, might explore other solutions such as the, the tokens one or, or even the, the public profile to solve other other scenarios, um, can I can I uh, just one one question? Uh, that is something that is not very clear uh, to me at least uh, is so th there is disclosure like like you can um, provide a, a verifiable credential to your application. Uh, so your your DAP has your verifiable credential now, uh, which is something that that it holds in I would say some in plain text at least in memory uh, maybe stored uh, uh, encrypted but but it's it's held so it then what it does when other peers come in um, and how it uses that 
may also uh, vary like like you um, right. like you for instance I, I'm, I'm seeing the case where a VAP may in, encrypt with a one well with a session key to which one of the peers um, the, the, the for instance a verifiable credential encrypted with just a session key to, to all of the peers uh, and not disclose it disclose it publicly or right. Just use group group uh, group encryption to yeah. send it. Well, yeah, th yeah. those are very very nuanced differences, but they they have a huge impact on 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 how private and how secure how how um, depends on the use cases after that. For instance, the DID auth a scenario where uh, imagine that you have a private document on Google Docs and you. Um, Put a link here on, on, on Zoom for everyone to collaborate. Mm -hmm. uh, what what they will see will be like okay you're not uh, you don't have permission to access this document request access and once you hit the request access uh, you are basically uh, encrypting your private credentials your credentials that you want to disclose about yourself like your name and your social proofs to uh, some key uh, like a shared key as you said uh, uh, for instance or even the owner of the document, if only the owner uh, might accept a new new people, it will be encrypted to the to that owner. So yeah, it really depends on the on the use case of the DAP, um, as you said. Um, makes sense. Okay. And let me just introduce some things, um, which is kind of related to this, um, which kind of goes into the second topic, topic but it's somewhat related. Um, because rep uh, rep uh, like having identity profiles that can be um, consulted at any time and replicated among others, uh, like let's say that I have Pedro's public profile and, and whenever Pedro changes it, I might also want to uh, update my, my copy of Pedro's credentials. This goes somewhat in line uh, with uh, the concept of identity hub. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with that, but essentially Identity Hub is a spec that was born in Reboot Web of Trust, which was a proposal made by some members of the DIFF Foundation. Uh, I think more uh, it was like two Microsoft employees that made the, the proposal and it's going forward. And I think they are already implementing uh, a spec and, and also a reference implementation of, of it. But essentially imagine that any identity might have an identity have hosted uh, in, in its home or even in, a, in some cloud provider. And what it does is that it only facilitates storage and, and facilitates relaying of messages, right? Mm. And everything is encrypted. Like even if it's hosted on, on Azure or, or Google Cloud or whatnot, everything is encrypted and only the identity can unlock uh, what's, what's in there. So what this means for what does it mean for identity profile? For instance, you might you might have uh, and and by the way, this also has computation. So it's not only storage, right? It has an API uh, that, uh, that you can use to interact with the data. So imagine, for instance, the second scenario where I say that the identity profile is passed when authenticated alongside a revocable a revocable token. This is actually a similar feature of identity hub where a DAP is given authorization to access the identity public information, sorry, the identity information, private information, uh, if, if it presents a valid token. And the user, the identity might revoke that token uh, whenever they, they want. Of course, this is something complex uh, to implement in terms of, um, the identity hub is very complex in terms of implementing the full spec and so on. That's why I said, said that I think it's better for the spec to, to be more mature and even have some reference implementation ready. And later on, like let's say in six months, we might have uh, an identity have already implemented. And we, we as IPFS um, uh, contributors can implement an identity hub based on IPFS technologies. Like let's say that I, I implement a full spec using IPFS as the storage layer, uh, and even uh, the, the networking as the, the, the protocols and, and synchronization and so on, because they are, they are agnostic in terms of transports. Their, their reference, reference implementation will be HTTP, but it's not tied to HTTP. You can use whatever you want. Uh, so that's why I'm, I'm more 
inclined to wait and see what they come up with and if it's something that we might uh, adopt later on um, it's better instead of doing our own solution and perhaps it will be incomplete and and it will be more complex um, and I'm more leaning into, into implementing just a basic similar to your port approach where you just disclose your your stuff and, and, and that's it. Basically. There's no synchronization in terms of public information and that information. There's no synchronization. There's nothing. And of course, this is simple, <laughs> but at least this is the baseline. Um, nevertheless, we still need to approach replication uh, because uh, we have several devices in our, in our possession. So you have your laptop, you have your your desktop, your phone, and so on. So you might have different IDMs, IDM instances running on those devices. So you need a way, you still need a way, at least privately and encrypted, to share or to replicate all those credentials amongst your devices. So let's say that I just bought a new computer and I install IDM and import um, uh, my, my identity that I have in, in, uh, in a mobile phone. I should be seeing my name and my avatar and my social proofs in the new device as well, completely synchronized among devices. So this is the second discussion that, that it's there. So basically, how can we do that? Um, because there's no uh, spec for this yet. Uh, each project implements these kind of things uh, in, their, in their own. For instance, Uport, I know that Uport uses um, uh, IPFS to store. The, the, your profile and so on, but it's not clear how they replicate things. I think they have something in the smart contract or something like that to retrieve uh, the CIDs or something like that of your profile. That's the, the way they synchronize and probably they listen to events on the, on the smart contract to, to know that the information was updated, but it's not clear. Uh, because you know that that part is not public really they implement their, their own solution uh, block stack is similar they have their own solutions regarding this and there's no spec for this all right i think identity hub is trying to solve this in, in an open way but it's very uh, early for them and, and for us to adopt that um, it's still very they are they are having baby steps basically the last time that i heard about or the first time that i heard about uh, identity hub it was in like one month before the decentralized web summit, which I think it's one one year ago, right, Peter, or something like that. Not maybe like August. nine nine months something. Uh, it, it was the August first or second. Uh, the All right. So yeah, I heard about Energy two or three months before. So I think nine months already passed, and I didn't see any real evolution on the project. That's that's why I'm uh, I'm keeping a certain distance to see what what they come up with instead of going full force into, into adopting identity apps. Um, but I think they resolve the replication as well because they have those information stored in the identity app. So whenever a new device connects to the identity, it has permission to access the identity app storage so it can retrieve the identity details. Um, so they resolve the problem that way. We, we as, as um, IDM, I think, we must resolve this somehow. So either we use stuff that we already have, such as Peerbase or RBTB to solve this. Uh, but I want to, you know, people to give their opinion about this. Go ahead. Um, seems to me like the, um, like the, the actual identity Ignoring like everything that is wrapped in is basically a static document like like can, It can essentially be a file on IPFS um, but, but then it, you need the ability to update it so IPNS perhaps uh, or, or uh, you know peer base has quick quicker application uh, um, You know, but there's there's even uh, like in I come from from the, from the dot side of things and people are working on sort of doing identity profiles there, which in that case, everybody was just doing just JSON inside a DAT archive, right? So it's the same, yeah, it's yeah, the same sort of thing. It's like you got a little identifier. It's essentially equivalent to IPNS. Um, 
I wonder if can we just do like sort of like a multi-format sort of switcher type of thing. So it's like, you know, uh, here are, I mean, the DID itself has <coughs> this sort of concept. All right. So uh, the DID doesn't have the concept of um, meta information around around the identity. Just just has the IDs and uh, the cryptographic material to interact with that. So it, from the app side, uh, for, or for, from the DAP side, what the DAP will receive from the, the user once the user authenticates, imagine that is something like um, a schema.org uh, person JSON document alongside mm -hmm. some uh, array or set of verifiable credentials saying, mm -hmm. hey, these are your social proofs and these are your um, social proofs in terms of Twitter, Facebook, and so on. And uh, this is like the identity profile, and this is not formalized yet in terms of the, um, the fully schema that it will be. But it, imagine that it will be a pack of uh, a schema uh, ent uh, person entity and uh, a set of credentials. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what, I, what we are discussing here is how can the different devices that connect uh, to, or to, that use IDM with the same identity, how can we share um, these identity profile among devices that are mm -hmm. that belong to the identity, um, yeah. and and as as you said, we can use IPNS and um, yeah. IPFS to to do that. We have to deal with multi-writer scenarios. Um, that's that's why I said uh, we could um, use peer base or some kind of CRDT to solve the problems I think and so on. I think you, you and Jim are, 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 are correct in the sense that you could, yeah, the, so the verifiable credentials could, could each be its own uh, document, right? Each one of the, the verifiable credentials. And then there is your profile, right? Um, and that's your JID profile. You could have multiple uh, identities, right, in, in your yeah, device. Right, right. Uh, so this, this kind of multiplies by your, your, each one of your identities. But right. let's just think of one identity. Um, so it's a profile and a set of verifiable credentials at least, right? But you could tie right. this up into a document and then you have a, a CID that you can use IPNS. And IPNS doesn't need to be slow as, as you can use IPNS with a pop sub. So uh, it could be something that, that you store uh, on IPNS and which could be replicated into an identity hub for persistence. So if you later want to retrieve it with another device, uh, you get you get that PNS update. If it's not up to date, uh, you fetch it and and, and synchronize. So that's yeah. the, the simplest approach that I that I can can think of that uses um, uses IPFS and all the the IPFS infrastructure. Then you could use like a very simple identity hub would be uh, implementation. We just use a, a, a pinning cluster or something like that to. To pin the to pin the your your current CID for 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 this, um, so you you'd have like a PNS and then and then pinned. Um, yeah, that's a simple approach, but but it has similar problems to the ones that we discussed in IPID, if you remember. Mm -hmm. So if you had a new device and you have a concurrent scenario, basically you overwrite each other or have a higher chance of uh, overwriting each other, and this is the same thing. Uh, it has the yeah. same multiplier problem, and I'm not saying that we don't might might not want to use IPFS. Probably want to use IPFS to store the actual data, but we must solve the concurrency uh, on top. I I, th I think we we must do that. Um, uh, one one. Uh, uh, so this 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 file are going to be private, right? Uh, by default. Yeah. So uh, I don't see why. If it's why... Sorry, it, will be, it will have to be encrypted. Exactly. So I don't see why you don't you don't uh, uh, instead of uh, saving them uh, as a, as a as text document, why don't you encode them in a, in a, in a CRDT, and and then you can use the same device that we came up with um, for the IPID, which is. Uh, like you have the current, for instance, let's, let's think about the profile, right? You have the profile document and then you have a new update from the remote, but those could be concurrent, right? So you do, you do a merge on those and then you write the, the, the new version. Eventually you, you will get the latest uh, written. Uh, Identity Hub could also have your, your keys 
um, and then identity hub would, would even do that itself. Um, identity hub doesn't have this one because it's very similar to using a database. So you have to have connection to identity hub, and the changes are um, solved by using Thomas C. Like uh, imagine, like they use a. Of course, there are also there. It might also have conflicts if if the operations are not granular. And it might have some conflicts as well. You're right. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It's the, the typical last right ruins for for HTTP. But I mean, we we don't have to implement that we have as as as, as it's specified now. I it's very complex <laughs> for us to implement it at this phase. If you if you saw the the breakdown, we have so many things to to implement just to have a basic authentication and signing features. Mm -hmm. And refi signage and so on. That if you if we go into that until you have um, and also implement it, it will be another like huge project for for us. It has a lot of features like collection search. Uh, yeah, I think I think uh, it could be a good idea to explore uh, using the same schema for for persistence and conflict conflict resolution that we're going to use on IPID. Yeah, I think so. I think it would make make. Uh, if we solve that one way, you could reuse the same solution on this one as well. I think because it's the same problem, right? Yeah, it's the same problem. It's the IPNS multi-writer problem, basically. Exactly. All right. There's also another project uh, that I've mentioned here, which is which is Treebox, uh, at IO. It's from the guys. I think it was some kind of fork uh, from Uport. I don't really know uh, what happened there, but essentially. It's the concept of having social profiles. So imagine public profiles uh, on the IDs, but only uh, based on Ethereum, basically. Which is kind of strange. Um, I mean, why, why only Ethereum? Uh, it's really pretty strict. But what they are trying to do here is, is basically creating a social profile, a public social profile that can be used by dApps to um, get information about someone and present them, present that to, and they also they have a sign-in feature and logout feature, which is pretty similar to IDM in terms of one of the features that we want to have. Um, so we are kind of uh, similar uh, to what they are doing, but they are more, fo they have a more focus on, on social profiles. Um, mm -hmm. Right, yeah. I've not yet tried it. I think they already have, yeah, I think we can already install it, uh, but we, it will require MetaMask. Um, but at least we even might try it. Anyway, um, so basically the, the outcome, outcome of this topic was to use the same solution um, as the IPID one. So use some sort of CRDT and we comp compose the final document uh, based on the CRDT merging and, and store that as well on, on IPFS for, for consistency. So by the way, we need some, some sort of pinning for this thing. <laughs> At least uh, a public infrastructure, a small public infrastructure uh, until, we, until we solve that um, in a more decentralized way, I guess. So having some sort of file coin or something like that. Uh, integrated here so that we could leverage uh, leverage uh, miners to store the that information for us. Yeah, if we use IPFS, um, like we could use a public a public uh, pinner uh, cluster. Yeah. Um, to 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 store to store that. These are yeah. going to be small, very small files, right? Yeah, they are like the DID um, document is very small. <coughs> Unless you have like tons of devices, it will be very small. Uh, and that entity profile itself, it will it will be larger, but it will be like I would say thirty kilobytes maximum. Size. Okay, but because identity hub, if I remember correctly, it was also the goal to store uh, your private data, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I remember, remember the thing about um, personal data uh, per application, like right. local storage per application. Mm -hmm. They have that concept, and also they have um, shared um, data. So imagine you have collections, and you can say, okay, okay, my music collection um, can be shared by this app and that app, 
and that up. And basically, oh, similar when, you, to, hmm. when you say that, you, you essentially give different tokens to those dApps and the dApps can use those tokens to retrieve the information. And whenever you want to, to revoke that access, you can, you just revoke that. Similar to, to Tim Berners-Lee, um, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Tim. <laughs> um, Dirk, Dirk's trying to say something. I'm just poking. Oh, him. all right. <laughs> <laughs> He's out about so small. We can see. We should put him. our whole whole hand on the screen. <laughs> I was also going to interrupt and say Dirk needs to talk. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was just wondering. Um, so you guys are talking a little bit about uh, IPID, mm -hmm. and I'm getting a little bit lost in my acronyms. Um, what was what was the solution that you were talking about for IPID? So if you remember, IPID is uh, the DID method based on uh, IPFS and IPNS and IPLD. Um, that also had that problem of uh, multi-writer scenario. Um, Got, it. Got it. Yeah, so one thing I was thinking is, um, I wonder if we have to worry too much about the multi-writer scenario right now because it might just be a UI thing where you, know, you tell the user whether their update has been saved and until that update is saved, you know, you just kind of educate them to know that whenever they save it, it's going to overwrite what they've done somewhere else. Because probably in practice, you're not going to change your email address too often or, you know, I, I doubt that these are going to be super frequent updates unless it's something like a status update. Yeah, you're right. Uh, let me just ask you something. If, is it possible, and, and by, by you, I mean everyone aware of IPFS and IPNS, is it possible to know if I ask for um, the resolution of the, an IPNS entry, like give me this IPNS entry, is it possible that the response is like, okay, there's no entry, uh, because I'm in a, a, a network where I have like five to 10 peers, like it's, it's very local. And uh, there's that, but there's, there's actually an entry on the public uh, IPFS. Is it possible for this to happen? Because if it is, uh, then we can't really warn the user about that scenario. I mean, you can warn, I mean, what Dirk was saying is like, you can warn them that of concurrent updates, um, not on concurrent updates, but that if they, they, they do, frequent changes on different devices for the public profile part of this. Um, they could be overwriting uh, other things, right? Yeah. That, that, that's what you were referring to, right? Yeah, but I see what uh, Stathazor is saying that you can't tell if you're connected to like All right. IPNS locally or the sort of global, you know, you don't know if there's been a network partition basically. Yeah, IPNS is, is a thing that more time you you wait for something or more time you listen, more less probability uh, there is of a concurrent update. Uh, <laughs> and, but you're, you're never absolutely uh, sure that there is no concurrent, concurrent update. It's a bit like, 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 like CRDT. So um, you could do. I think, uh, the, I think that the IPID multi-writer scenario, uh, while it's more, not so frequent, but if it if this happen, it's very um, bad for the user experience because that device that was nice and was usable because it was part of the data of the ID document, the next day it isn't, and you must uh, you might you must fill in the paper key again and so on. While the second this what we're discussing here, like uh, having your name and so on be overridden, is not so bad. Because you, you might change it. Uh, oh, Jim, Jim is asking. Is right. So um, I want to talk about like low hanging fruit, uh, which is like what's the easiest thing to do that would sort of unlock the maximum number of apps. Um, and the problem is like you know like identity is infinitely like deep. Uh, <laughs> it's a fractal. A bunch of yeah, it's a fractal. Um, you know, like, are we going to like, you know, improve Facebook or whatever? Like, I, I don't think that's where we should start. Like, I think um, if you look at something like PeerBase, what does PeerBase need? Like right now it does, people have the ability to change their name with or to change their peer ID and put the little name in there. 
but nobody even knows that exists. But I think if people could just show up, like internal in the company, and it's sort of more the group private use case, um, if they could just have their name and an avatar would be awesome. So, and don't worry about people impersonating each other. Um, obviously, we want to figure that out. Um, but, um, you know, like it would just unlock, if you, if you could just sort of click a button, your name and your avatars in there, you probably don't ever need to update your name, but you probably want to update your avatar quite frequent, more frequently. So like, I think if we can think about like that use case and then think about like, how do you layer on uh, more and more use cases onto it. Um, so like, I, I think like that, that use case is actually fairly easy for us to implement with IPFS. Like, if, like you have an IPNS document, you know, uh, it's just your, your image is a, is a JPEG. Uh, your name is just a little piece of text. You can update it. You probably don't up, update it very often. Yeah. Like that's your profile. Um, you know, now it's like, how, how, do, how does that arrive there and how does uh, that get updated? Um, so so we're, like we have a, most of the pieces there, um, but then it's like, how, do, how, does, how do I get that into PeerPad? I think that that boils down to like the schema.org person, like there's 10,000 uh, uh, attributes that you can give to a person, but like, like choose one or two and, 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 and just use that. Yeah, it for, will be, for the same it will one. be very, very small. And then, it will and then, have like the name and avatar. And then, and then no, yeah. no verifiable credentials could be like a good, a good like version zero uh, thing with no verifiable credential, just just the name and and uh, and uh, and the avatar. I mean, it could work for some some applications. Yeah, but you know, for the simplicity of that, and that's an excellent idea. I mean, just adding a public key and a signature as well mm -hmm. would would take us a lot further. Mm -hmm. Two more pieces of information. Yeah, and then I think like for like in, in thinking like internally for PL staff. Like if you could, the first step would be like a verifiable claim. Like, are you, what's your GitHub? Are you really that GitHub user? Because then you, we could use that for ACL type things. So if you want to have a private conversation in crypto. Or, or as, as David was, was suggesting, uh, you can like in an off band side channel, you could ask them for the public key and yeah. match that against I mean, there, there could be even emoji encoding the, the, the public key and you can just, just what, see if the emoji matches the emoji that they send to you, you through any Slack channel, for instance, yeah. uh, and see if it matches. And then you have authenticated the user who just, just using a very simple, verifiable credential, which is based off your, I would say, IPFS um, peer ID or something. Yeah. But then we're still going to want to have the, the IDM in there somehow. So, like, what does this, what does the simplest IDM look like? But this, this would be one verifiable credential, right, David? Uh, this yeah, it's correct. Like, if you if you just put your name and your avatar, it will be two credentials basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and and if we solve that in terms of uh, visual uh, visual experience and, and actual the actual schema. It, we might later on add, add other fields, uh, more complex fields. And I think that's essential for us to have something to trust on because verifiable credentials can be verified, right? Can be, you can check the signatures and you can check if the public key that matched the signature is part of your DID document. That's, that's the real benefit of having uh, the DID and the IDMs and so on. Andrea, sorry, Can, uh, I don't understand some, something. So the username uh, and avatar is a, a verifiable credential. It's a verifiable uh, credential, but it's self signed it's, it's not just part of the profile because the only way I can verify that is if, if I have a verifiable credential, like a social one, like the ones that David uh, is, is using, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the only benefit is that, that because you self signed it, I can actually verify if the name that you said you have, it was signed by you, and by you I mean a key that was with, with your within your DID document. That's very powerful, right? Oh, okay. Okay. 
um, but still, 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 it's it's a human verification, right? Okay, makes sense. Um, and then, then you have like the the social credentials, uh, which are more complete because you can actually see if what you said about yourself. Uh, um, I mean, the, the idea that you said you were and your name is actually associated with a profile that you already follow and you know uh, that the Pedro is PGTA in, in, uh, in Twitter, for instance. That's another level of trust. Um, and, and yeah, that's it. Okay, interesting. I mean, what, what you said about, uh, you know, the public, sorry, the, the credentials and so on, about being simple, I, I want really to be simple and that's why I'm cutting off the replication and stuff like that. Um, and I think having local credentials, um, I mean local on the EDM and replicated among devices is, is the basic stuff that you must have and dApps receive those credentials whenever they authenticate. That, that's the basic stuff. That's what, for instance, Uport does. Uport signs those credentials via GWT and, and so on. Um, that's the most basic stuff that, that we uh, must, must have and will have uh, for dApps to have an avatar and a name within a chat app or what, what not. And regarding the replication and so on, we'll like simplify that uh, for the dApp side but for the device side, I think we should use the same solution for, for IPID because it's a reusable solution. If you, if you make a package for that, it's pretty straightforward to use that. that. Um, I will go for, for that first. And, and later on, of course, we can explore identity ads and whatnot. Makes sense. I think we are approaching the end of the meeting. Uh, do you have any further like opinions regarding these topics? I'm just, you know, I'm just typing in a couple of things like questions and thoughts uh, as well around, because we were talking about syncing and I think there's some real fundamental issues around, um, you know, what, what is the identity key and is there a master key above it? And I think that was discussed online in the uh, sort of the, the big discussion that was on, I forget which repo uh, on GitHub. So just, I'm thinking about that stuff too. And, you know, like for instance, I was going to type how closely is the, you know, the IPFS ID for your node, you know, just how closely is that tied to, um, you know, your identity? You know, I'm assuming you're going to, you're going to have multiple nodes and what controls those keys and the whole idea of someone stealing your key and or device and getting a hold of a private key and how can you put that key out to pasture and and also one other idea or concept is just putting you know some kind of uh potential uh time limit on your identity you know or on keys inside your identity so there's some yeah. things to think about okay so so that is it's tied to the did spec um so essentially, a DID is, is an unique identifier that, that resolves to a DID document, and that DID document has multiple public keys. And they are layered, layered keys. And by layered, I mean some keys might have higher permissions than others. It really depends on the DID, the DID method that you choose for your identity. For instance, the, the one based on uh, IRC 725, if I'm not mistaken, has this concept of management keys and authentication keys and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. Essentially, a management key has higher access to the DID document in terms of editing it. You can basically do anything. And uh, while an authentication one just um, is there, basically, you can't really change the DID document. It's just used for authentication. Imagine like you have um, a computer at work uh, that you want to use to authenticate. Uh, so you put the authentication key there, but you want, don't want to have the, the management key in that computer because that computer is like shared be between uh, your friends or your colleagues at work and so on. Um, IPID, uh, which is the first DID method that we'll embrace in, in these um, IDM projects, by default, it doesn't have layered keys. 
uh, it just has a key that controls your, because it's an APNS record, so it's just a key that controls the whole DID document. So our approach is, in terms of the user interface, to make it um, obvious that you must store that key privately uh, via paper key, for instance, and, and once you do that, the key will be deleted for, from the, the IDM. And once you need to add a new device or change anything in your DID document, it will be asked uh, for uh, like for a threshold of of the the paper key keys words for you to to generate the private key again to change the DID document and again it will be deleted after that operation. Um, but uh, uh, there's another solution uh, that we will we'll not pursue, uh, which is a layered key for IPNS for IPID spec. But that will be more complex for for us to implement at this phase. But that's basically it for now. Um, in terms of how we'll deal with that. Okay, th thanks. That's good to know that that's what the thinking is. Yeah. Right. Um, any more opinions regarding anything about identity profiles? You, you know, one other thing just too with Jim, based on what Jim said, like maybe all of us need to really just think about the, the tiniest possible thing we could build even if it's throwaway, you know? Yeah, I actually, it's, I think it's too late, but I, I can uh, put in the notes or perhaps I will leave a link in the notes so that you can see uh, in terms of the user experience and, and what the identity profile really is. It, it's very simple, it's like an, an avatar and a name. And we have like two or three fields more, but it's very simple in terms of the first approach. We don't want to uh, expend much time in thinking about all the fields that the schema person has and so on. So it will be very simple for us to implement a verifiable credential <coughs> module that you know you can create a credential based on some data. Um, and that data is just those fields that we have there. And that's part of your identity package or profile. Um, and that's basically it. And, and also you, you, we, uh, We'll have the social verifiable credentials, which are normal verifiable credentials, but the proof, uh, they, they, they have the proof of your um, identity, uh, so, sorry, your social profile on Twitter and Facebook. But that's something that we do after we sort out the basic details, like the, the, your name and your avatar. Once we solve that, we'll also solve next um, the social parts. The, the linking your like posting it something on Twitter or in list or, or whatnot and and generate a credential also for that there is uh, like we first have to solve the basic and then go 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 into those social parts which we should have the experience uh, on doing which in, in your projects uh, on IBM yeah yeah cool awesome thank you Sorry, I've been I've been sort of out of the loop for a while, and I'm just getting back in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what, basically, what you did in your in your uh, project uh, is a verifiable a set of verifiable credentials uh, that point to proofs on social profiles or posts or whatnot, and those are part of your identity profile. And and the credential itself, the data structure, actually has like a type that that. You can choose whatever it goes there. It's it's not there are recommended types, but we can invent our our own, like IDM, Twitter, proof, or something like that, so that we can recognize that social uh, that those credentials as social proofs in terms of the user experience and, and so on in the interface and so on. Cool. Yeah. Any more? No? All right, so I think we are past the schedule. So um, I think we'll, we'll close the session here. So yeah, and I think in summary, we'll keep it simple. Go to the, go towards the first solution, which is similar to your port, in terms of how the dApps receive the, um, the profile and so on. And regarding the, the replication among devices, we'll probably go uh, into the same solution as, as we go as we decided to the IPID method. So that those are the, the conclusions. Cool. cool. All right, people. Thank you very much. And bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.